It's snowing. I don't know why. But it's Friday, so that means I don't have to go outside. So that's good, you know? That's good. We're back to our roots. It's a Friday afternoon. It's like 5-something. This is at the afternoon. Are we into the evening? Probably the evening. It, let's call it the evening. But, yeah, back on our roots. I mentioned last week, not last week, I mentioned Monday. I mentioned Monday that I was going to be making an episode about the Fantasy Baseball League. And as you saw by the title, that's what we got here. That's what I got for you. So I mentioned before that I, I mean, if you look at this show, I have a significant interest in fantasy baseball. I've always really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun for me. Um, I've been in one league with uh, my dad and a few of, uh, you know, his buddies and whatever uh, for the past, like, few years, and that league's been pretty tough. I haven't won it yet. I I think I may have only finished fourth is my best finish in that league. And also, uh, side note, I will still be in that league uh, that I have yet to win. Uh, I think I'll, it'll be my fourth year in there, so I will be doing uh, at least two leagues this year. Two these two leagues, which I uh, which I'll be spending a lot of time on, and I'm really excited for. And uh, maybe a third uh, side bitch league, just ESPN quick league. If I really feel like it, God, I don't know. That might that might get a little freaky for me. But uh, yeah. We'll have the bullpen league, and I will be in that other league that I have yet to be crowned champion. But that league's really kind of gotten me more interested in fantasy baseball. I've gotten a lot more into it since I got into that league, and I just really like the structure of it because, you know, the the roster is like 30 players, and that's going to be the same in this league. I'm going to break down the whole thing. I've I've got a whole notebook's worth of of details here and I'm going to go over it as concisely as possible and you know what if by the end of this if you're listening you have any interest I'm hoping to fill up at least you know eight to ten teams um so yeah just I'm not hard to find if you have an interest let me know and uh you know hopefully we can get this league filled up I have no idea you know how uh easy or difficult or how long it might take to to nail it down, but if you got an interest, just let me know. Fuck yeah. So, uh, it'll be at least 8 to 10 teams, I think. I know that with the teams being 30 players, I feel like we could do 8 teams, it, 4 in each division, east and west. The divisions don't have a lot of significance outside of uh, how the placing works at the end, which I will get to. But, and it's just like, you know, I just like the idea of two different divisions and a little more competition, you know, because maybe if you, maybe if you don't win the league, maybe you can still win your division. So that could be fun. But yeah, at least, at least eight to 10 teams. It'll be on this app called Fan Tracks. Uh, it, it, it advertises, Jesus, I'm having a stroke. It advertises itself as being 100% customizable, and it's accurate, and that's what brought me to it, and the app looks pretty good, I'm a fan of it, and uh, that was kind of the draw of getting on there, because I was able to customize, you know, everything to my liking, you know, in this league, and a lot of it is built off of, you know, that league I've been in the past few years, because a lot of the stuff in that league that I like um, is in this league, but I kind of just, like, added some stuff and in some ways this is very much an experiment and I'll uh you know as I explain some of this some more but there's definitely some some experiment experimentation going on with uh with how I'm with with how it's structured and I'm kind of excited to see how it works out so as I mentioned you'd have 30 players on your team we would have to do a, a draft I imagine it would take like a little bit under two hours or maybe around two hours. I That's probably about the longest, like, single time commitment that the league would take. You know, you can check it every week or check it every few days or it wouldn't be a everyday thing if you didn't want it to be. Uh, I'm going to check my shit every day because I love to do it and I have a lot of fun with it. 
so 30 players, you'll have 11 starting position players. Now, that includes, you know, the infield, the outfield, which is catcher, first base, second base, third base, shortstop, three outfield spots. I thought about this. We'll be we'll have a DH spot and two utility spots. So the difference in that is the DH spots, because the designated hitter is in the National League now, there are a good handful of players who have DH as one of their listed positions. So it's basically just an excuse to be able to have another guy in your lineup. And that's also the appeal to the extra two utility spots because those spots can be literally any uh, any position player. Versus having nine players in your starting lineup, this one will have 11. And that's uh, it's kind of just more of an excuse to to play more more of your players and uh, just kind of see what happens. I wonder how the scoring will be. I'm curious. And then there will be nine pitchers, five starting pitchers, and four relief pitchers that will uh, be in your starting lineup as pitchers, as duh, as what else? <laughs> Not as fucking unicorns. So that's 20 total uh, starting positions 10 bench spots and you can use that however you want if you want 10 hitters and zero pitchers on your bench you can do that I wouldn't recommend it but you can do that or vice versa or you can do whatever you want but there's 10 bench spots you can use them how you'd like um, for reference last year uh, in the league I had 17 position players and 13 pitchers on my 30-man uh, team last year. But in that league, that was a little bit different. I like that league a lot because there's a ton of bench spots. There's more bench spots in, in my other league than uh, than this one because I kind of opted to, to see what would happen with more starting positions. Uh, but there's still the same uh, same total roster number, as I've, I keep repeating that shit. But in this league, we'll also have uh, five injured reserve spots. So if your best player gets hurt and he's out for a while, you, you know, you can still have him. You don't have to lose him, I guess. Uh, or if you, uh, there's an option in there that I selected as well, where if one of your players gets suspended, you can put them on the injured reserve list. So that'll be cool. If you have a dude who gets uh, suspended for like 20 games or some shit because he's doing uh, PEDs, then uh, you can put him on your uh, on your injured reserve list while you're suspended, and you can pick up another guy in his place, and then you don't lose him. So that's cool. Um, and you know, just die- guys go on the injured list all the fucking time, and it's annoying, and it's kind of a hassle. So I feel like five spots for that, you know, it's fun. It kind of creates a little bit more depth, and uh, it allows you to have you know more useful players on the team. What the fuck else? Oh, the scoring. So, the scoring, the way it works is you try to score the best in six categories, six hitting categories, and six pitching categories. So, say you have the most runs scored, you will be number one in that category, so you'll get a credit of 10 points in the standings. And so if you're winning all the hitting categories, so 10 points times 6, 60 categories, 60 points, then that, you know, gets uh, gets added to your number in the standings, and that's how it's scored. Does that fucking make sense? I'm not sure if that makes sense, but I don't have the energy to try to explain it again. So... I'll I'll run through the categories. So as far as hitting categories, we've got runs, hits, batting average, home runs, RBIs, and stolen bases. And in pitching, we've got strikeouts, wins, ERA, holds, whip, and saves. Did I... Is that all six? Hopefully that's all six. And I'll... uh, there There's a couple couple interesting things with the scoring that I'll also talk about here. So 
a, li a little experiment part of this is having hits and average. I'm curious if it's going to be redundant because those two stats are kind of synonymous. You know, you uh, the more hits you get... Um, oh, Amanda's calling me. I guess I get to go play mini golf on March 23rd. Sweet. That'll be fun. Okay, back to whatever the fuck I was talking about. So, again, hits an average, it could be redundant. I don't know. You know, a player a player who has the most hits is likely going to have the highest average. So, I those stats could be redundant and if it ends up being dumb, it can get changed next year, but whatever. And then as far as the pitching stats, the uh, significance of having saves and holds, those are two stats that relief pitchers get, and that's why there are four spots where you have to place a relief pitcher in your starting lineup. And there, and then the other five spots are for starting pitchers, just like a you know real baseball rotation, and then you got four relief pitchers. So, you know, most likely you would get two guys who are likely to get saves and other two guys who, you know, likely throw in the seventh or eighth inning who pick up a lot of holds, like uh, that Cano guy from uh, from Baltimore or something. That was the first guy I thought of. He got a lot of holds. But, yeah, that's two stats. I, I love uh, finding good relievers in in the fantasy baseball. That was That's a big part of uh, that other league, too, trying to, you know, Get, and those guys, if they're good, you know, they can help you in all your other pitching stats too, you know. So it's uh, it's fun and it makes you it makes you kind of think a little bit more about the pitchers. And I don't know, man, that shit sounds fun. What else can I say? What else can I say? I wonder, I, I think, feel like we're making good time here. I'm, I'm making my way through my notebook. So um, I've got a list. I think I've I've got a couple more points to hit. Oh, fuck. I got one more. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but okay, so as far as I'll talk about how the placing will work and then I'll talk about the shit that I like because I've got a list where it says things I like and I will go over those things near the end. So as far as how the placing will work, because I said there's two divisions, the East and the West, right? So to get first place, you one, have to win your division and you two, have to have the most points in the whole league. So if you're first and first in the standings, then you win the whole fucking thing. Second place is if you won the division, but you have less points than first place. You won your division. You still can flex that over, you know, four other people. Not too bad, you know. Third place. So say someone in the West got first place. So they won their division, and they had the most points in the league. And then whoever won the East division would be in second place, no matter what. Whoever has the most points scored out of the East and West divisions, excluding first and second, gets third place. That's how first, second, third will work. So I think that's fun. Just because you, I feel like there's there's some fun in you know trying to win your division at least. You know if you say there's somebody who's just really fucking good in the other division, and if it seems like they're gonna win, then you can at least gun for the guy that's uh you know in your at the top of your division. So it's it's a little extra wrinkle. I think it's interesting. So that's how the placing will work. Hopefully I explain that fucking good enough. We'll see. But here we go. Things that I like. You'll have a, a total of 20 players in your starting lineup. So there's a lot of days where all 30 teams are playing. You'll have 20 players who can potentially do something good or bad for you. So I feel like the scoring opportunities will be plentiful. So that'll be very interesting to see how that works. As I mentioned in the starting lineup, you'll have a designated hitter spot and then two utility spots. The designated hitter is a is an assigned position. There's plenty of dis uh, there's plenty of those. Plenty of designated hitting uh hitting eligible players. Plenty of those guys. But uh it's another position that you do have to plan for. It's another guy in the lineup, and I think that's fun. And then the two utility spots, uh, just an excuse to get a couple more 
guys out there. And then uh, the four relief pitcher spots and then the five starting pitcher spots, it kind of mimics a, a real, uh, you know, pitching staff almost. Uh, you need a couple more guys in the bullpen for that to be a little closer, but you'd have uh, four relief pitchers, five starting pitchers that uh, that could be, uh, you know, all on the field on the same day for all you know, but that could be fun. Another fun thing that I actually haven't mentioned yet, so... I preferably, I would love for this to be a keeper league. I've never done a keeper league where you choose a handful of players that you get to keep from your current team for the next year. I've never been in a league like that, so ideally I would like to do that. Ultimately, it'd be up to a league vote, you know. Um, I would. I think that would be a lot of fun. If you get a couple, I I could easily see myself getting a couple uh, a couple players on my team this year who I would really want to keep for next year so I feel like that would be fun and you get a little bit more stock in it so I'm uh, I'm curious what the thoughts are on that but the other thing I was going to mention with it being a keeper league and with us kind of looking at a at a little broader thing you know assuming everybody has fun we we'd be able to trade draft picks as well which I never even thought could be a thing, but on fan tracks, shout out fan tracks, I guess. They uh they liked my tweet earlier. That was neat. But yeah, we'll be able to trade draft picks one through ten. Um, not for the draft of twenty twenty four because, you know, we have nothing established yet. But um during this season you will be able to trade your draft picks for the twenty twenty five draft. Um again, that's kind of contingent with it being a keeper league. But say I guess I guess say somebody did one out after a year if they if it just wasn't for them then you know somebody would just have to take over their team I guess that's all it would really take so I guess there's not really not really much pressure I'm still uh I'm still fine with with determining that later that's not a problem with me but that's kind of what that would look like I think trading draft picks is fucking fun it feels like the fucking NFL that's for yeah that's I mean that's fun so uh, trading draft picks you know say you're uh, Say you suck at the end of the year, you want to get rid of a couple good players, and then you got a guy who really wants to go for it and try to win the league. He doesn't really give a shit about his draft picks, and then he trades. He trades you, you know, a couple draft picks, and and you're better off for next year. Something else I like. I mentioned the the injured reserve. I like that too because you know if your best player gets hurt or something, you you can. Put him on a different list, and then he's uh, not taking up a roster spot, so puts a little more, uh, you know, you could get somebody somebody on your bench who can help you out. Um, there's six scoring categories, as I mentioned. We'll have to see if, uh, if the hits and average is stupid or if, uh, if they're, if I'm cu- really curious about the scoring. That'll be really interesting to see how that goes, because... I feel like it'll just be plentiful or, you know, sometimes I had a couple years where my team just was not good. Like, it just happens. Like, there are times it's a long season and guys don't always hit good. And there are times where all your guys are in a slump and it just happens. So, you really just, with six scoring categories, I feel like that can either be awesome or really get you. Really fucking get you. I'm not sure. But that's why we're doing this, to fucking find out. And last thing, I will somehow integrate this league with this podcast. That would that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know exactly how it's going to look. I know that inevitably I'll end up bitching about my fantasy team on here at least once or twice. It, it'll probably happen just because it's fun to talk about fantasy baseball. But this, it, I I'll come up with something. I'm open to suggestions. It could just be a little, you know, update at the beginning of each episode, a little, you know, kind of flash standings update or something, or maybe a little quick news thing every week. It could be its own standalone episode. Maybe it gives me an excuse to put something out on Monday and Friday. I'm leaning in that direction, but I'd, I'd want to be able to commit to it. I'm, uh, Sometimes I sometimes I upload what I want to, and other times I end up late, as as has been shown. But you know, I I don't bullshit about that. We we do our best. We always get it out. So uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be integrated with the podcast somehow. I 
we'll figure it out. And I guess if anybody in the league wanted to come on and bitch about their team, that could be a very fun time as well. So that opportunity would be there. Maybe that would entice somebody. I don't know. But that could be fun. Get on the get on the show and blow off some steam if you have to. Maybe a trade discussion. I don't know. Do what you want, man. I think that's about all I had for for lining up this league here. I think that's about all I had to pitch it. Yeah, again, we'll be looking for at least 8 to 10 teams. And uh yeah, we'll see see if we can get a, enough people to be interested and and I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it'll it'll be fun to to just see see how it goes and make watching baseball a lot of fun and I've always enjoyed it. Now, I'll mention I've also got a small list of things for whoever does end up being in the league, here's the things that you would have some say in that, uh, you know, I would ask you and we would see if uh, see if we wanted to do these things. This would be up to everybody in the league if we, uh, if we get assembled here. So we'd have to decide if we want some prize money. I'd have no problem with that. You know, if we all threw in 20 bucks or something, then uh, we could throw that to first, second, third maybe fourth and fifth place i don't know depending on how much we want to throw in that's fine if people want to do that if that would be fine uh what app <laughs> the fucking group chat is on uh the thing the app actually has a a separate like chat channel on there it doesn't look that bad i don't mind it so if we wanted to use that then we definitely could but i also don't give a shit there's plenty of other apps that's planning ahead i guess but and then Assuming people are down for the Keeper League thing, it, we would eventually have to decide near the end of the season or something how many players we wanted to keep for the next year. So I don't know what that could be. Three, five, I don't know. But I'm not really picky on that either. So we can see. We can see how the season goes. Maybe some people hate all their players and keep two, and maybe some players will want to keep five because they kicked ass. But we'll figure that out. Hopefully I threw that out there concisely. Hopefully it makes sense. I'm pretty excited. I'm excited to to make it happen. And uh, yeah, if you have any interest in, in fantasy baseball and you think it would be a fun time, if it sounded interesting, I'd, I'd love to, you know, talk a little bit more about it. But I think I'm wrapped up here. That was fun. That was a whole fucking episode talking, talking like a fucking nerd. That's fun. Fantasy baseball nerd signing off. Oh, fuck. All right. I am done. I'm done. I hope you enjoy the weekend. If you're listening this long, again, I'd really do appreciate it. Um, if you get a chance to, to give it a rating on either Apple or Spotify, that's fantastic as well. I know that helps the show a lot. Um, I I have noticed a, a, a little bit more lately so that's pretty fucking exciting so if you're new i really do uh i really appreciate that you're here especially on this one where it's uh just about fantasy baseball <laughs> and uh in this league i'm i'm throwing together here so as always i have a fun time the season starts soon that'll be fun the jerseys suck ass that is uh that's a problem i don't know if you've seen anything about that but go look that up I guess I'll leave that with you. Oh, and one one last thing. Uh Spencer Davis. Spencer Davis, my buddy, he was uh a I believe co writer. Yeah, co writer and uh actor in I'm a Head Out, which is a, a movie that I was a uh, first assistant director for, directed by uh my buddy Zach. So uh I got to know him through making that movie. Great dude. Uh, loves baseball and uh, we're going to find a time sometime in March for him to get on the show and we'll talk some shit that'll be fun so again if you listen this long you got that news congrats all right I'm saying goodbye for real now I'm going to edit this thing and then sit around and not go outside